Hi, this is David from over at SimplyMino.com and today I want to take some time to address a question that we get quite often over at our forums which is how you get a wireframe overlay on a rendered image. Now, back in the day we would do this with mental ray contour rendering or various other techniques but there is a very fast way of doing it that doesn't add to your render time at all which is part of the problem of course if you wanted to do a turntable which was half rendered image, half wireframe well, a few years ago you would probably use mental ray contour rendering for this if you were using mental ray. There are several other methods of doing it, but all of them were quite complicated and required you to re-render images. So they all took a lot of extra time. Now there is a way to get a simple wireframe out, either a smoothed wireframe or an unsmoothed wireframe, and overlay it over an image very, very quickly now, thanks to Viewport 2. So let's pop open Maya here. And as you can see, I've got my simple Lego scene here. I've got a turntable camera, which is the camera I use to do that render. And you can see I've got a turntable animation because this technique will work with both still frames and animations. And as I say, it really is a quick way to do it. So it's a very nice way to present your render if you're putting it up on a forum for critique or if you're adding it to your show reel, or you just want to show it to a friend. This is a very simple, easy way to get both the actual rendered image and the wireframe overlay over the top. Now, we're actually going to be utilizing Viewport 2 quite a bit for this. So the first thing I would say, I'm going to hide my background image. Now, if you want the wireframe of your background image, simply leave it in. The reason I'm going to hide it is to show you that my camera background, my perspective background here, is this nice gradiated blue that Maya comes with as default now. Now this won't do for what we need to do. We need a black background. So if you hit the left Alt and B, um, some of you may know you can use this to change the background color of the viewport. We're going to leave ours black. We're also going to pop open our outliner so we can create a new layer. We're going to want to assign a material to all of these bricks that's just a flat matte black, but I don't really want to you know, then come back in and reshade everything in my scene. So I'm going to create a new layer here. Just take all of our geometry and go to the uh, channel box and add new layer with selected objects, which would be this button here. And you can see that's worked because I can turn it on and off. While I've got everything selected, I'll just assign a new material and I'll just use a Maya surface shader. So let's come in and Maya surface, surface shader, and by default that should come in black, I seem to remember, yep, there we go. So now we've got some black objects on a black background, which you might think is a bit, you know, useless, but as soon as we turn on shading, wireframe on shaded, you can now see the wireframe in this viewport. Now, again, if you want a high-quality wireframe, it's quite important to utilize some of the settings here under Viewport 2. So just go into, pad, uh, go into Renderer, Viewport 2, click its option box, open it up, come down to Anti-Aliasing, and give it a higher sample count. Now, depending on your graphics card, you could either work with this higher sample count at all times, or, you know, if you have a... Um, a card that's not capable of it, I would recommend you don't always leave this sample count this high, but as we're going to be using this on a final render, then a high sample count is absolutely fine. Make sure you've got smooth wireframe and multi-sample anti-aliasing clicked on as well, of course. So now I can see the wireframe in the viewport. Now if I want the more complicated wireframe from the smooth view, um, I could leave smoothing on, or if I wanted uh, the simpler wireframe, I could of course turn smoothing off. Depends on what you want to look at. I'm going to leave the smoothing on for this, because it's not a particularly complicated or dense wireframe on these vehicles and bricks. So I think personally the smoother one is going to look a bit nicer. Now, you can also come in and change the color of this wireframe. Um, you can find that under Windows, Settings Preferences, and Color Settings. However, it's not really necessary. It's one of those things that's very easy to change later on within Photoshop. So now we've got this, let's flick to our camera that we rendered with. And this would be in line with, let's have a look in Photoshop, with this just little test image that I generated for this tutorial. So let's go back to Maya and talk about how to get this out. Now the first thing you'll see is I've got a resolution gate on my camera here 
And by the way, if you're not sure how to get your images out of Maya in a sequence, or you're not sure how to set up a turntable, have a look at a tutorial I made a couple of days ago. It's on our channel. I'll link it below, which will tell you both of those things. So, you know. Uh, but right, we have this resolution gate. We don't need it. We don't want it. It'll make everything the wrong size. So let's come up here, turn off the resolution gate. Now this should match my final rendered shot. So this will now match this. Okay. Now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click on the Play Blast settings. And I'm going to need to change a few things in here. So I'll reset that to its defaults. So I have what you should have. And I'm going to come down and change the frames to 1 and 1. I only need one frame. This will render actually take out 0 and 1, but it doesn't matter. They'll both be the same frame. So I need one frame with our Play Blast. I'm going to come here now, click the Play Blast options. Don't need views, don't need ornamentation. Our encoding doesn't need to be done because we're going to use an image. So in this case, our encoding would be set to PNG. Should work absolutely fine. Um, display size from render settings because we want this to match our render settings. So remove temporary files, yes. Save to file, yes. And let's go in here and give it a name. So again, we'll put it on PNG. You can use a different format if you want. And I'm going to call this, uh, as you can see, I've done some play blasts for this tutorial already. So I'm going to call this play wire. There we go. And I'm just going to hit save. So one thing, scale has come in at 50%. We obviously want to match the scale perfectly. So let's click that and hit play blast. So you can see that doing its little play blast thing here. As I said, it's extremely quick. If we were doing hundreds of frames, it would still be extremely quick. And let's open up that play blast here in Photoshop. So play test, I think we called it. Uh, play wire, there we go. So open this up, and there you can see my wireframe. Now I've just got to get this overlaid on top of my image. So control C, copy it, paste it. Now, because of the transparency, I think it's come in a little top-heavy here, but it really isn't a problem. It's very simple to adjust in Photoshop. I'm pretty sure everybody here knows how to just move a layer around in Photoshop. If you don't, you can use the um, tool here, the Move tool, and just use the arrow keys on the keyboard. We'll move it about. You can drag it about. You can get it in position fairly easily. So now we've got this wireframe, we're going to have to change its channel operation to an add operation. So let's flick it over to linear dodge, and you can see there is the render with my wireframe overlaid. Now if you don't like the blue, of course you can colorize it. Many things you can now do with it in Photoshop. So if you wanted it just gray, hit Control u to bring up the hue and saturation menu in Photoshop, and whack the saturation off, and you've got a gray wireframe. You could also leave the saturation and go for a different colored wireframe. You know, now you've got an entire raft of things you can do with this wireframe. If it's in an animation, you can now fade it on and off, um, and so on and so forth. So it's a very, very quick, very simple way to overlay a wireframe over a render without having to re-render everything. So let's try this for an animation. Just It's going to work in the same way, but just if you'd like to see it, you can stick with me here, and I'll render out a play blast here that's... 109 frames long. And if you're wondering why 109 frames, well, because that's how many still shots I rendered out for this tutorial. So no, no particular reason for that. That's just how many images I have to work with. So let's come in here and play blast this out. So let's play blast. And this time, because we've changed this, we'll end up play blasting a lot more. Now you could give it a different name, animation or whatnot. But in this case, not necessary. These are just temporary files for me anyway. Um, play blast, and you'll see that this generates a play blast of my simple turntable. So from here, you can use these images in Nuke or After Effects or whatever you use as your, you know, third-party post processor for animations, um, and just overlay them at the top, the same way we did in Photoshop. So I'm going to now open this up in Nuke, and I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so I just have Nuke open here. I have my two sets of images loaded in, my animation, uh, sorry, my rendered still shots and my wire from the Play Blast. And, you know, depending on what application you use, this is going to be slightly different for you. But in Nuke, we're just going to merge this. This will be the background, this will be the foreground. So we're going to use a plus operation, of course. 
plus and then I'm going to hit one to connect that to the viewer and you can see here that my wireframe has come in. Now you can also color correct this wireframe in Nuke the same way you would in Photoshop or anything else. I'm not going to go into lots of color correction. I just wanted to show you that this technique is perfectly suitable as well for work in an animation. So there you go, an animation with an overlaid wireframe that's very quick and simple to generate. Now of course you can use whatever editing software it is you use to fade that wireframe on and off to give it a better look. You know, and you can get some really nice effects with this without having to do two complete sets of renders. So gone are the days when you would use a mental ray contour render um, or you would render out the uh, the uh, a, a wireframe texture or something like this you know just adding a lot of time to your render now you can use viewport 2 to your advantage the quality is generally high quality enough um, for most things I mean there might be unusual situations where you need it to be done a different way but as you can see this works nice and easily it's nice and quick so that question comes up a bit how do you get a wireframe overlay um, this is just one way but in my opinion it's a very fast way it's a very simple way and it'll do in a pinch for a lot of situations so thank you very much for watching um, check out the video which will show you how to do a turntable render and also how to render out an image sequence with Arnold if you are unfamiliar with that of course and check out simplymaya.com great form over there and we've got a whole raft of tutorials so thanks very much for watching and I will see you hopefully on the next video we do